complained about going to church back then, did we? They said, we going to church. You didn't have an option to go to church. You went to church or you got the alternative. And I know y'all here, so y'all didn't get the alternative. Amen. Amen. But we're going to go to Isaiah 53. That's in the Old Testament. And we put this in the uh, bulletin so you can get a head start on finding the inscription. So that way, we don't have to wait too long. But if you didn't find it yet, go to your table of content, find it there, slide over, find that page number, and then go to the 53rd chapter, Isaiah 53. The focal verse is going to be verse 3, but we're going to read verses 1 through 4. All right. Verses 1 through 4. And when you have it, we can stand for the reading of God's word. We thank God for these mighty men of God behind me. We thank God for all of our deacon and deaconess and all the officers of this church that work ever so diligently. Uh, we want to thank Brother Stewart in our absence and Sister Karen. Hello, Stewart. Well, let's give God a good hand of praise. miss you. Amen. 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 And all those that work in the church. Isaiah 53 starting at verse 1 through 4. And I'm reading from the ESA version. Who has believed what he has heard from us? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? Verse 2. For he grew up before him like a young plant and like a root out of dry ground. He had no form or majesty that would look at him, and no beauty that we should desire him. Verse 3, he was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrow, acquainted with grief. And as one from whom he hid their face, he was despised, and we esteemed him not. Verse 4, surely he has borne our grief and carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you and we bless you. In this time, Lord, we give you the praise. Lord, even as I go forth to preach your word, I ask that you hide me behind your cross. In my stead, continue to lead your sweet Holy Spirit. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, my God, my Lord, my strength, and my Redeemer. And Lord, if someone may ask, what must I do to be saved? These words can be a light to their pathway. Yes, Whether they can find a waiting door or go in and suffer you. Yes. Lord, we have to give you the praise, glory, and honor. Yes, Lord. In the mighty and matchless name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, <laughs> let all God's people say, Amen. 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 You may be seated Amen. in the presence. All right. All right. There was a plan. There was a plan. There is often in the mind of many people a plan for life. This is how they wish their life would go. One day they sit and dream of a life that is to be. This is only in the mind, however. Then they have a dream of how they want their life to go. Again, this is in the mind, however. Then out of nowhere a person begins to lay plans for the rest of their life. Yes, they create a one, five, and ten year goal. They make goals and objectives to be reached at each interval in their life. Yes, they make plans that just in case something go wrong, there's a plan within a plan. Uh -huh. They try to imagine the obstacles they will face and the changes uh, that will come to make them change their plan. Yes, then something strange happens to the plan as if they did not see it coming. All right. The one thing that we never take into account about our plans is the outside influences that may occur. Yeah. 
Think for a moment, how many plans have you made for your life? What has changed from the original plan that you laid down from the first day of doing this? Many of us sit here today and realize that our plan for life has not gone the way that it should. And then you say to yourself, there was a plan. As we read the writings of Isaiah, he's starting to report the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. God's report cannot be misunderstood with man's reasoning. There's often times when we get to this blessed day that many people have an opinion about the resurrection of Christ. All right. More so now than ever, there are vast numbers of people trying to disprove that Jesus was born, that he lived, that he died, and that he rose on that Sunday morning. They have plans to discount the prophets of old and discount the, the eyewitness account. They have plans to try to discount the historical proof. They have plans to discredit even those that speak the word of God today. All right, all right. And in many essence, in many ways, their plan is going according to plan. All right. If you don't think the plan is going according to plan, look at the empty spaces in the church. Those spaces used to be held by somebody that said that they believe in an almighty God. Their plan is working because people say, I don't have to go to church on Sunday. I can just watch it on YouTube or Facebook. They have a plan to pull the people of God away from God. Yeah. On recent weeks, we say, how do we return the church back to God? There's a plan for that. Yes, Lord. Point number one, the plan has to have a sacrifice. That's right, that's right. The plan has to have a sacrifice. Yes, Lord. I've been preaching well over 20 years. And the plan that God wrote in his blessed word has not changed. Right. Despite what people say, you can make the Bible say whatever you want it to say. Well, let me be the first one to tell you if you haven't already heard, the Bible only says what it says. Yeah. You can try to twist it and make it say whatever you want. But what God said to Moses, he's still saying today. Right. When the commandments were written, it said, Thou shalt not. Guess what? You should not. All right. When we choose to believe God's report, then He reveals His arm of salvation. We will not see Him help His help unless we believe. Yes, God. The Bible says that a carnal person cannot understand the spiritual things of God. I know people that have read the Bible. From front to back. Now, if you can remember everything in that Bible, please come see me. All right. Because even I got to go back and do some review. Amen. 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 First Corinthians two and fourteen says, "But the natural man receives not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolish unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually they are not spiritually discerned." The only way you truly want to understand the spiritual things of God is that you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Yes, Lord. Yes. I had a plan when I went to the seminary. I, I wanted to learn more than John 3.16. These babies repeated it today. I said, we still giving them John 3.16. Yeah. Right. But when I went into the seminary, that was the only piece of scripture I knew because that's what I was taught when I went to Sunday school as a little boy. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't know nothing about the Bible when I went into the seminary. And I was a 
grown man. But I knew John 3.16. Yeah. Somebody had a plan to put John 3.16 yeah. in my head. And guess what? They said, maybe said so much. It stuck through my adult life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whomsoever believeth in him should not perish, but what? Have ever lasted in life. There was a plan. Many people choose to believe, believe the natural report rather than the supernatural report. We want to believe everything the world says. Y'all get off of Google and Facebook and all that stuff and get out of that book and get your head in this book. You'll be all right. Have that mess on Facebook. Don't make no sense no more. Nobody care about what you eat. And what you got on. Some folks put more clothes on. That's what they need to do. Y'all might as well say amen. amen. The plan required a sacrifice. Isaiah said he was despised and rejected yeah. by men. Yeah. Realize and understand, if you don't understand God's plan, you will not understand what God is doing in your life. Sometimes God sends some of the lowliest people to you to help you. Yeah. The Bible says be careful how you entertain a stranger because you, you could be entertaining an uh, angel in the sky. Yes, Lord. All right, all right. All right. And you say he'll make the devil your footstool right. so even the devil folks can do you some good yes, with God. Amen. Right. Amen. Amen. Exodus 23 and 1 said, Thou shalt not raise a false report, put not thy hand with a wicked to be an unrighteous witness. Uh -huh. It was saying he was despised and rejected of men. Now, when Jesus was being crucified, then you know they, they asked, who, who do they want? Do they want Barabbas or do they want Jesus? And you have people in the crowd screaming, Barabbas, Barabbas, Barabbas. Yeah. But then even after that, and Luke, I believe, is 28, and he said that and witnesses came against Jesus to make a report of yeah. who and yeah. what he said. Jesus said that if you if you destroy this body, guess what? In three days, I'm going to lift it up again. And they went and told it. And they put a twist to it. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. You know how you tell somebody something? Yeah. And then by the time they get all the way around back to you, it's not what you said. On uh, your you said, uh, 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 I, I love you, did by the time he get back to you, he said he didn't love you. <laughs> Yes, Lord. But there had to be a sacrifice. Yes, sir. All right. Jesus had to come to die for your sin. Why are we here today? Because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Guess what he had to do? He had to complete the plan that his father had laid down before the sound, uh, foundation of the world. He knew that Adam and Eve was going to mess up. And guess what? That sacrifice had to be made. He said, son, I hate the action, but I'm going to need you to do me a favor because old Adam and Eve is going to mess up. And I'm going to need somebody to straighten up what they messed up. Right. Right. People don't even realize that when Adam and Eve realized that they were naked in the garden, that was the first sacrifice because they wrapped themselves in their loins and animal skin. Well, where did the skin come from the animal? They had to kill it. Mm -hmm. right. Now realize and understand that was God's plan. Amen. God's love for us uh, is at a level and so intense that we couldn't take care of what we messed up ourselves. So he had to send somebody that was more than capable of dealing with it. Point number two, the plan had to have a strong foundation. The plan had to have a strong foundation. Just this week alone, I've spoken with several people about a church doing a disaffiliation from their group because the leaders 
in the group want the preacher and the members to accept things that's not of God. Right. One person I've known for over 20 years and another one I just met get my oil change up at best one. And she heard me and another man talking and she heard him say he was speaking and he asked me who I was. I said, I'm the pastor of Great Second, the church across the street from the high school. And she said, after he left, she said, can I ask you a question? I said, sure, ask me a question. She said, how should we deal with this? Should we just go along with what they're asking us to do? I said, the only thing I would tell you is to seek God and stand on the word of God. Amen. 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 To seek God yeah. and stand on the word of God. Yeah. Yeah, you heard me say it, you, and I'm going to say it to my dying day, whatever that address is downtown, where they locking folks up, yeah, I'm going down there. They try to make me marry a man and a man and a woman and a woman. Y'all yeah. better come get me. Yeah. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Yeah. If I'm down there more than five hours, it's going to be a mad pastor when he gets out of here. You laugh, The plan has to have a strong foundation. God knew that he had to make a master plan and have a foundation that would not break under pressure. And even as Jesus walked on, uh, with us for 33 years and he walked into the garden of Gethsemane and he asked the disciples to pray for him with him and he came back and he said, couldn't you just pray with me for a little while? And he went back into the garden and then he said, Father, uh, uh, let not my will be done, but let thy will be done. But before that, he said, if, if it be your will, yeah. let this cup pass for me. Yeah. And people want to say that Jesus got weak. Jesus didn't get weak. What Jesus did was show a man his mortal side because then his 100% God showed up and said, let not my will be done, but let thine will be done. Yeah. Yes. And how many people know when they going to the cross is going to tell somebody? If you knew your head was going on chopping block, mm -hmm. you getting out of marrying so fast, ain't nobody gonna know where you at. Amen. You gonna skid down, and you can say, you know what? Tommy Lee was supposed to go to court on Friday, but he never showed up. Yeah. Oh, Tommy Lee ain't showing up because he want to keep his head right where it's at. The strongest consideration is to know that your foundation must be sure. Think about it. The strongest uh, metal known to man, the strongest, uh, strongest material known to man is diamonds. Diamonds demonstrate both thermal conductivity and electricity, insulating properties. As much attention as we pay to diamonds, even it can break. I bet there's about 30 folks in here got a diamond on their hand right now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Gabe, when you say, will you marry me? You kept it when you say, I don't want to marry you. <laughs> then you, you bought it when you say, this is my gift to myself. Right. Or this is a, what? This, this is one I didn't get me ready. This is an upgrade. <laughs> You've been married all these years, you gotta get an upgrade on your wedding ring. I like to know how that goes. Well, I paid for an upgrade too, so I ain't got nothing to say. <laughs> happy life, happy wife, I don't care what nobody say. I get to sleep at night. But the plan had to have a strong foundation. It had to be sure, it had to be able to wait, uh, uh, bear the weight of, the, of what, what it was going to have on it. And then on top of that, it had to last. Right. It's been over 4,000 years since the plan, plan of God was revealed to man. And it has lasted through the ages. We're here today celebrating the resurrection <coughs> because the plan is sure. Realize and understand for a moment that if the plan 
did not have a strong foundation, we would not be here today. Amen. People say that they're going to wipe the church off the face of the world. They cannot wipe the church off the face of the earth. Because the only way the church is going to be off the face of the earth is that Jesus is going to come back and take the church with him. Amen. So why are we still celebrating the resurrection of Christ? Amen. What is the ultimate plan? Last point, but most important point, the plan has to work. The plan has to work. Nobody ever set a plan expecting for it to fail. No one ever sets a plan expecting for it to fail. I have made many plans in my life and have not seen most of them come to fruition. You may say I'm wrong philosophically or, or by Webster's Dictionary, but I do not believe in failure. Let me tell you why. Failure says you have no other recourse, no other option. You can do nothing else. But I believe that so long as God gives breath, I can try it again and again and again. And so long as God gives breath, I can try to do his will better and better. I didn't fail it. I just didn't hit the mark. I didn't give up. I just didn't get where I was supposed to. I'm not giving up until God calls me home. And I'm not going to consider myself no failure. Amen. There are too many people living when people say you ain't nothing but a feather. Mm -hmm. And you ought to really get them to ask them, do you look at your life lately? Amen. Do you see you in the same situation I'm in? Amen. You still living in the same neighborhood I'm living in? Uh -huh. You still driving that car from 1967 just like me? Yeah. Right. The plan has to work. And I'm going to repeat what the baby said. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whomsoever believeth in him should what? Not perish. But what? Have everlasting life. Now here's the, the part that everybody don't want to get to. And that's verse uh, 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 317. That Jesus did not come into the world to condemn the world. But that through Jesus Christ that the world might be saved. The plan has to work. See, 316 only work if you add 317 to it. And if you leave off 317, then you didn't finish the plan. Because Jesus came, Jesus lived, Jesus died to finish the plan of an almighty God. And how do we know he did it? Because John 17 and 1 said, and when Jesus had spoken these words, he lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify thy son, that thy son may glorify you, since you have given me all authority over all flesh to give eternal life to whom you have given me. And this is eternal life, that they know you are the true God. And Jesus whom you have said. Yeah. Realize what he said. He lifted up his eyes to heaven. Uh -huh. yeah. And he said, Father, the plan is finished. Yeah. Uh -huh. And ever since Jesus died, the plan has been going forth. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. the, the Romans were so scared of Jesus mm -hmm. that they put gods at the tomb. Yeah. But they didn't know because they put a rock inside of a rock, they couldn't hold him in there. And he was coming out anyway. And when they woke up and they saw the stone roll away, what you get? They got panicked. The plan has to come true. The plan must go forth. Someone asked me this week, why is there no voice? from the Christians today.
because we have gone silent and not standing on the plan of God. Mm -hmm. We've gone silent in our homes, we've gone silent on our jobs, we've right. gone silent in society, we've gone silent in politics. Right. I'm here today to tell you that I will go silent no more. I'm going to hold up the bloodstained banner, yes. saying that Jesus lived, that Jesus died, and that he's coming back to me. Yes, there are millions and millions and millions of people on these social media disproving God. Well, guess what? We're going to get, get, get on there and we're going to prove that Jesus is still alive. Amen. We're not going on there to battle. Okay? God said the battle is his, not yours. But we're going to encourage God's people. On this Resurrection Sunday, before you eat, thank God for what he did on the cross. Thank him for saving your life. Thank him that he's still God and God all by himself. Let's get the church give God a hand in praise. The door to the church is open. You can come by that candidate for baptism or Christian experience. If you do not know Jesus Christ in the heart of you,